very special player. We're excited to watch him tonight matching up against the talented forward for the Eagles and Imani Bates. Yeah, Imani Bates is, is as advertised. He makes shots of high difficulty look easy. He will take and make transition threes, and as you see now, he's about to get started. Imani Bates, sophomore forward. From it, Ypsilanti, Michigan, hometown player for the Eagles. Bates will kick. Billingsley swings it to Farrakhan. Farrakhan, the floater off the glass and in. And one thing you just saw there is Noah Farrakhan's athletic ability. He gets off the ground quickly and he gets off very high. Starting five for the Gamecocks, Carter. Michi Johnson, Hayden Brown, Gigi Jackson, and Bozeman's for Donk. Great pass to Brown. Wild shot, but he draws the foul. That was a great play for South Carolina. Understanding that they shifted Eastern Michigan's defense to a point where Michi Johnson could get downhill to a slashing Hayden Brown. Monty Bates picks up his first foul, brings Hayden Brown to the line. The graduate forward from Greer, South Carolina. Hayden's a 68% free throw shooter coming into tonight. Hits the first. I believe Hayden Brown's going to have to have a big game tonight in order for South Carolina to come out on top. He's had some big ones lately, double digit points in his last five. Gets the second to go. Eastern Michigan 3-9 and nine overall. Just one win away from home so far this season. This is Jeter. And Hayden Brown draws the charge. First foul on Legend Jeter. Hayden Brown does what he does best. He really can draw fouls on the defensive end. He gave Jeter space where Jeter tried to eat that space up, but he was already there and grounded and drew the charge. Hayden Graduate transfer from the Citadel. First team all SOCON the last two seasons. Trying to get it inside to Gigi Jackson, but it's a steal for Imani Bates. Bates takes on Bozeman's for dunk. Bates, the fall away. That's good. We talked about it before. Imani Bates can make and take high, difficult shots. Double digit points in every game but one this season for Bates. Averaging 19.4 per game. Good for top 30 in the country. A double team on Johnson, and it's a turnover. One thing South Carolina has to be aware of is that Eastern Michigan double teams on handoff and ball screen actions. Long three from Bates. Back iron. Another opportunity for the Eagles. Bates once again off the mark and the rebound tracked down by Bozeman's for dunk. That's a great look to Gigi Jackson with the slam. Great slash from Gigi, John, Gigi Jackson, but also Bozeman for dunk showing his vision and seeing that slashing cutter. Coach Paris says Bozeman's for Donk is someone who has a really good feel for what we want to do, a communicator, a vocal guy, extremely willing to do whatever we ask. He's an excellent passer from the post. That's Billingsley. He'll draw the foul. And it's on Bozeman for Donk. He picks up his first. So Jalen Billingsley to the line, the sophomore forward from Cleveland, Ohio. He's a 53% free throw shooter as Coach Heath gives some coaching to Imani Bates. Billingsley's a transfer from Georgetown. Played 30 games last year for the Hoyas, so only averaged just over two points per game. Seeing a lot more time this season for the Eagles, averaging 6.3. Well, he's an active rim protector for Eastern Michigan. He serves a great role in making it very difficult if a team is a team that focuses on getting paint touches, he's there to erase. 
assist. Knocked away from Bozeman's Verdonk, but right to Michi Johnson, who takes advantage. Let me ask you, is that an assist on Bozeman Verdonk? Or? If you're generous, I'd give it to him. I'd give it to him. Felt like he meant it. Billingsley working on Hayden Brown. Runs out of room and now will pass out. Hayden Brown is doing a good job of walling up with his chest and making it really difficult to get post entry. Tough shot for Farrakhan, but he drains it. Yeah, for Noah Farrakhan, for Imani Bates, they take those shots at a premium. Jackson against Billingsley. Rises, fires, and hits. Beautiful finish. Mid-range jumper, and that's what we talked about with Gigi Jackson, his ability to play at all three levels. Jackson averaging 16.6 .6 per game, double digits in every game. The only freshman in the country to do that. Bates against Brown, under 10. Imani Bates. It's a turnover for the Eagles. Chico Carter, he'll drive. Pulls up, the floater is good. That is when South Carolina is at their best when they are creating easy offense from their defense. Hayden Brown did a really good job of recovering on the defensive end after losing Imani Bates and creating a turnover. Chico, the team's leading three-point shooter, that time doing it inside the arc. 10-7 lead for the Gamecocks. Here's Bates. Contact. A whistle and a foul. Looks like it's going to be called on Bozeman's for dunk. If it is, it's his second. That'll take us to a media timeout with 15-21 left to go in the first. South Carolina. And uh, both teams have a strategy. They just have to stick to that strategy. Monty Bates is a 72% free throw shooter. He hits the first. This guy is a scorer. Career high 30 points against Michigan back on November 11, 29 against Florida Atlantic, 26 against Florida International, 19 last game in the victory over Detroit. Brown looking for help. He finds it in Chico Carter. Eastern Michigan will do different defensive strategies to apply pressure and to keep South Carolina on their toes. Under 10 for Jackson. Over Bates, off the mark. Jackson was asking for contact, doesn't get the call. So Farrakhan will bring it up for Eastern Michigan. Farrakhan and Acuff, really interchangeable guards, John. Absolutely. Acuff is more of a facilitating guard, but has the capability to score it. And so if you are uh, Eastern Michigan, that's a luxury. Billingsley with a nice move to get around Hayden Brown. Billingsley did a really good job of dropping that shoulder and slipping by Hayden Brown, who was doing a really good job of walling up and playing defense with his chest. Billingsley has started the last three for Eastern Michigan. Colin Golson, who started last game against Detroit, not here tonight for Eastern Michigan. Carter on the drive. Five seconds for Brown. Jacoby Wright off the glass, no good. And Josh Gray can't hit the putback. There's a player, a player down player for event. Eastern Michigan. Yeah. Down a while. Noah Farrakhan, the sophomore guard from Hillside, New Jersey. Very important player for Eastern Michigan. He's their second leading scorer, 13.6 per game. Yeah, I think him and Chico Carter had a collision there because Chico Carter was rubbing his face. And he's a player that, you know, okay, they bring in Imani Bates, but he's someone that you can build a program around, Farrakhan. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, I watched him in high school. And he was must-see TV at all times. Transfer to Eastern Michigan from East Carolina. A lot of transfers on this roster. Here's one of them, Acuff. Bates pulls up inside the arc, in and out. And a rebound to Jacoby Wright. Sophomore from Fort Mill gives way to Chico Carter. He pulls up for three. Got it. 
Chico Carter made a great read coming off of that handoff chase action where he understood that his defender went under that screen, giving him the daylight he needed to take and make that shot. Acuff can't answer, and right with the rebound. Josh Gray posting up against Randall. That's something, John, that South Carolina is going to want to do today is if they can establish the post inside of Eastern Michigan, they're not that strong on the interior, so if they can get the ball to the basket, attack the basket, they'd be better off tonight. I know Coach Paris doesn't want to settle for jump shots, then you're doing Eastern Michigan a favor. Yeah, what you'll also see is Eastern Michigan deny the perimeter. And so what that means is that there's going to be a lot of cuts wide open cut actions available and so South Carolina has to make sure that they are efficient with their passing when somebody does back cut Carter thought about it from the corner right kicks it out Davis finds Jackson again with the slam Great patience from Davis there to recognize that Gigi Jackson was wide open because Davis coming off of that role had two people on him at the time. Gigi has six. Four of those points coming on dunks. Shot no good from Yusuf Jihad. What a career high 17 last game against Detroit. A whistle and a turnover. And it'll bring us to immediate timeout with 11.47 left to go in the first. South Carolina leads Eastern Michigan 15 to 11. My name is Chandler, and a little thing I love about the chick. Potential NBA first-round picks. He has six so far, three for five from the field. I mentioned a pair of dunks. And we talked to Gigi earlier today in shoot-around, John. He was really excited for this matchup against Bates. Yeah, he was static about it because he's seen Bates before when he was in high school and uh, understands the type of prospect that he was, especially when he was getting recruited out of high school. I mean, he had every option under the sun. And so when you play against a player of that kind of talent, you obviously are going to be hyped up to see and see how you measure up against one of the best players in the nation. That's a good look. And the stuff from Jihad, sophomore forward from Farmington Hills, Michigan, averaging 4.4 per game. Right from the wing. That's good. Great ball movement from South Carolina. You're seeing the circulation there, and you have to have a kid like Jacoby Wright implement himself more in that offense. Gamecocks are two for three from downtown. Rice, Jihad, now Lovejoy. It's Jihad off the mark. A long rebound to Michi Johnson. Davis pulls up top of the circle. Can't hit. Hankin Sanford with the rebound. Another opportunity for the Gamecocks. They'll swing it around. Hayden Brown will drive. Splits two Eagles and draws the foul. We talked about it. Hayden Brown having to have himself a good game on both ends of the floor. And I love how he is attacking from the offensive end. He just attacked the close out there from the corner where he recognized he had secondary coming in a little late and could Euro step right in between them. And they call the foul on Kate, Kevin David Rice. He picks up his first. So Hayden's the line. Short on the first. Hayden averaged 18.8 .8 last year, 9.5 rebounds for the Citadel. He's with the Bulldogs for 111 games from 2017 to 22. 1,400 point score, 700 rebounds in his career there. It's tremendous numbers. I've seen that kid cause fits all through the SoCon. It was a no-brainer as to why Coach Paris 
needed to have him on this roster. Shot from Acuff is no good. Fight for the rebound and ends up in the hands of Jacoby Wright. Gamecocks lead by six. Hank and Sanford thought about it. Instead, he'll take the feed from Wright, gets inside off the glass and in. Aiden Sanford just simplifying it and get, being effective just by setting a simple ball screen and rolling with the purpose. He was very good against Western Kentucky. Season high, eight rebounds in 12 minutes. Playing the five, six foot eight. Spin move from Acuff. And that's a, we talked about it. We have a lot of playmakers on this Eastern Michigan team. Farrakhan, Monty Bass, and Acuff. A foul's going to be called on Lovejoy. He can't believe it. He picks up his first. It's a protest from Coach Stan Heath. In his second season at the helm for Eastern Michigan. Farrakhan back in. That's good news if you're an Eagles fan. He was face down on the floor for quite a while. Johnson, a deep three. Got it. Yes. Billings and gave Michi Johnson way too much daylight there. And obviously the scout report is out at this point. This guy can knock down a three two feet off of the line. Unlimited range. He hit six threes against Western Kentucky. Farrakhan will dish to Billingsley. Contact with Brown. And it's knocked out of play off of Hayden Brown. Hayden Brown did a good job. He had to show in the help side for Farrakhan getting that paint touch. Farrakhan did a good job of hitting Billingsley for the dump off, but Aiden Brown recovered quickly. Five seconds for Acuff. He pulls up. Off the mark. Strong rebound from Hank and Sanford. Hank and Sanford is doing a really good job in just playing the role and limiting Eastern Michigan to one and done, but also he's kept the ball alive for the Gamecocks a few times on the offensive boards. Ten seconds for Chico Carter. He's double teamed, so Hank and Sanford will put up the three. Too strong, and the follow-up finish from Davis. Beautiful, beautiful follow-up dunk from Zach Davis. And I didn't even know he had that in his, in his uh, bag there, man. Well, the athletic freshman, the 6'8", guard from Orangeburg, South Carolina. Here, but it's, it's, it's a good crowd. It's been a dunk fest so far for these talented freshmen. Gigi Jackson, Zach Davis. Gamecock shooting 62.5%. And there's Bates who rattles in a three. Yeah, Amani Bates came in right away and implemented himself right back into the offense. He cannot give that guy much daylight. And I'd say Gigi Jackson did a pretty good job of making sure that he was available. How about Zach Davis? Gets another one to go. And Zach Davis is going to be a special player as he continues to get comfortable within the scheme and scope of Coach Lamont Paris. You're, all, you're seeing more action from him, Hank and Sanford. Obviously, Gigi Jackson is Gigi Jackson. So you're seeing these freshmen get active more. Bates feeds Jeter. Instead, it's Bates. Michi Johnson with the rebound. Michi coming off a career high 25 point game against Western Kentucky. Jackson against Bates. The fall away is good. GG Jackson doing what he does. He's got a size advantage and strength advantage on Amani Bates and using his shoulders, getting the space he needs, and taking that mid range fadeaway jumper. Acuff pulls up. No good. Johnson with the rebound for the Gamecocks. The lead 30 to 18. Michi Johnson drives on Acuff. The follow up. Michi Johnson, that's how you know he's a good point guard. He recognized that there was no weak side help when he first got past half court and understood that he could have a one on one situation against Acuff. And what an addition he's been. The transfer from Ohio State injured his ankle in the opener. Battled, struggled a bit. He's come back, looks healthy. 
putting up some big performances for South Carolina. Billingsley. This time they will call Hayden Brown with the foul. He drew a charge earlier in the game. Yeah, I don't know if Hayden Brown was outside of that zone. Let's see where his feet are. He's outside. Moving. He got his foot he's stepped outside. on. I mean, his, his, his feet are moving, but he's there and he's waiting. Kobe Wright checks back in for South Carolina, replaces Zach Davis, who was excellent in his short stint here in the first half. Yeah, that's a bright spot for Lamont Harrison, bringing these freshmen along as they're giving pivotal minutes for the Gamecocks. Billingsley can't hit. Six minutes to go in the first half. South Carolina leads 32 to 20. Jackson, another one! We literally saw them working on this play in pregame and understanding what Eastern Michigan wants to do. They want to shoot the gaps and try to anticipate and get easy, fast breaks. That back cut was available. Textbook offense for the Gamecocks. Gigi Jackson playing NBA Jam tonight. There he is with the rebound. Johnson, another deep three off the mark. The rebound to Javante Randall. Randall did not play against Detroit. This is the 11th game off the bench this season. Acuff runs out of room. Farrakhan. Now Billingsley. He'll square. That's good from Jalen Billingsley, the sophomore out of Cleveland. Yeah, and you see Coach Lamont Paris talking to Gigi Jackson saying, you did everything you were supposed to do on Billingsley except for close out with that high hand. Every little bit can disrupt a shooter as long as you do those little things. Billingsley has started the last three for Eastern Michigan. Jackson, short on the three, the rebound to Bates. Gamecock lead is 12. Imani Bates. Scoop shot, no good. Farrakhan for three. In and out. Fight for the rebound. It's Hayden Brown who comes away with it. Great feed to Carter. And that's what happens when you run the floor. You see South Carolina not just settling for the half-court offense, seeing what they can get first, being opportunistic on the break. And then if they have it, they're going to take advantage. Chico has seven. Farrakhan gets it inside to Randall. He's able to convert. Javante Randall, a redshirt freshman from Detroit. Randall has been serving great minutes as being someone who can get on the boards, create second chances or tips. Brown misses from the corner. Billingsley with the rebound. A whistle. And a foul is going to be called on Chico Carter, his first. And it brings us to immediate time. Yes, because most of the game cuts, they try to create more opportunities. When you have lulls in your offense, you have to find more ways to get in rhythm. And so South Carolina does everything they can to create second chance points for themselves. And so it is a concern, especially for Eastern Michigan, who has been out rebounded in a lot of the games that they lost to make sure that they hold a premium on rebounding the ball. Carolina winning the rebounding margin right now, 16 to nine, make that 17 to nine. Ford Cooper with the rebound for the Gamecocks off the miss from Farrakhan. Quick hands from Lovejoy. He knocks it away from Jacoby Wright, and we'll go the other way. And Lovejoy has done a really good job of disrupting on the defensive end. He is a specialist when it comes to the defensive end of the floor. A very good defensive player. He hasn't scored in the last two games. I don't think that's what he's meant to do. I think he is a disruptor. So, obviously, you need a point guard to be able to get you into your offense, but... If you can't get into your offense or if you can't even get the ball past half court, then that is helping Eastern Michigan. 
Well, Jihad wanted it in the post. Instead, Bates said, I'm going to take it myself. Pulls up from three and hits. Well, Bates is 6'10". And so Jacoby is about 6'2". And so he saw the size advantage and understood that he didn't need to do much dribbling. He didn't need to do much work. All he needed to do was just lift up and shoot over him. Eastern Michigan just two for 12 from three. Both makes from Bates. Brown lost it, but he's fouled. It's going to be called on uh, Noah Farrakhan, his first. And this is what I call the danger zone for South Carolina. They've had a comfortable lead. And once Eastern Michigan sees the ball go on the basket a few times, they can really run off a, a handful of shots. Brown feeds Hankin Sanford. Misses from in close. Brown, he can't convert. And it's Randall who comes away with it. This is where you got to watch Imani Bates because he is great in the open floor. Farrakhan trying to feed Randall. And he's out of bounds. You see how quick Eastern Michigan gets up the floor because it's tough for the defense to get themselves back in order and loading on one side or the other. And so that's where they get their offense going at their best, and that's when they can get their isolations. Farrakhan takes a seat. Acuff back in. Those two quite a combo. Both of them combo guards that can play the point, but also score so they complement each other. Under 10 for Jacoby Wright. Cooper an open look. He's short. The rebound for Chico Carter. Nice move. The reverse. That was a great move for Chico Carter, understanding that Amani Bates would jump on that pump, pump fake, and then all he had to do was get to the other side of the rim for the up and under. Gamecock lead is 11. Jihad runs out of room. So they'll reset with Amani Bates. 10 seconds. Pulls up, top of the circle. That's good. Oh, splash from Amani Bates. Yeah, it's going to be tough for Jacoby Wright because of his lack of size and length. We saw Imani Bates struggled a little bit more with G.G. Jackson because similar size, able to put a little bit more strength on him and alter the shot a little bit. Bates has 13. He's 4 for 10 from the field, 3 for 7 from deep. They get it inside to Hank and Sanford. Instead, it's Jacoby Wright. The follow away baseline, no good. Acuff with the rebound. Talked about this is what we call the danger zone for South Carolina. Monty Bates playing with house money at this point. He's seen it go in a couple of times. This is where he becomes deadly. Good defense from Ford Cooper made it tough on Bates. Now 10 seconds for Jacoby Wright. He feeds Hankins Sanford with the stuff. And that's the trade-off. If South Carolina can continue to create stops, they can get on the other floor, get in a fast break, and get themselves an easy dunk to finish off the half and go in with some momentum. Last second heave, no good from the E Conference tune-up for both teams. Get ready for conference play for South Carolina. It'll be SEC play, of course. Preseason number 14 in the SEC. They're looking to prove the doubters wrong. Eastern Michigan preseason number 7 of 12 in the match. So they're predicted to finish in the middle of the pack. John, sometimes it's tough to predict how a team will finish when you bring in so many transfers and there's so many new faces like for Eastern Michigan. Absolutely. It takes time because you have to get connected. You have to be on the same accord there. And from time to time, you can see teams make it work during conference play, but there's also times where you can sink and sink further down that hole where you don't have a chance. And you look at Eastern Michigan's conference, they are a one-and-done type team where if you win the conference, that's how you go to the NCAA tournament. If you go to the NCAA tournament, you get more exposure, and I think that's what these guys are looking to do. Bates pulls up. Rattles in. That's a tough shot, man. Two that's tough shots to start the second half as Michi Johnson got one to go before the shot from Bates. There's Michi. Acuff closed on him quickly. Jackson. Shot no good in the rebound for Farrakhan. Farrakhan was shaken up early in the first half. He looks to be all right. 
Bates a deep three. Got it. And I saw that coming. It took too much time for Gigi Jackson to find Amani Bates. And by that point, and he is a rhythm guy. Once he sees it go in once or twice, he is very difficult to stop in that regard. Bates has 18. Bozeman's for dunk. Maybe didn't realize he was wide open. Didn't go up with it. Instead, it's Carter who drains the three. That's, that's great that Chico Carter made that shot. But at the same time, you can't, you can't do that. You got to make that layup. Another thing they can't do is leave Bates wide open for three. He gets another one. He's got yeah. 21. Yeah, and that was quick. Three quick threes for Amani Bates, and that's why you can never be comfortable against this Eastern Michigan team that can put points in the basket quickly. Bates is 5 for 10 from three. How about that move from Jackson? Can't get it to go, but he draws the whistle. It's called on Amani Bates. He picks up his second. And that's smart, and obviously... Gigi Jackson knows how to attack Amani Bates. And Amani Bates, I mean, in their last game, got in some foul trouble against Detroit where people, the, Detroit was going right at his chest. And so Gigi Jackson has to find ways to impact the game and obviously try to get Amani Bates in foul trouble. Jackson hits the first. GG's had some big performances this season, 22 against Georgetown, 22 against Upstate, 20 at UAB, 20 against Colorado State. And he leads South Carolina so many categories, points, rebounds, steals, tied for the team lead in blocks coming into tonight. Yeah, the guy is a stat stuffer. I mean, he does a little bit of everything. He rebounds, he gets steals, he blocks shots, ultra shots. He's a good player. Jackson checks out. The Gamecocks lead by nine. It's Jacoby Wright on Bates. Bozeman's for Donk all over Jeter. Here's Imani Bates. He'll drive on Bozeman's for Donk. Can't get it to go. The rebound for Hayden Brown. He looks to push. Jacoby Wright on the drive, kicks it to Carter. Michi Johnson draws contact. And Billingsley can't believe the call. He'll pick up his first. It was great ball movement for South Carolina and really making sure that they took the high percentage drive or shot. Michi Johnson did a good job of getting downhill and drawing that secondary defender where they had no choice but to foul him. Bozeman's for Donk, who picked up two fouls in the first half. Tries to get it to Johnson. Instead, it's a turnover, and it's Acuff the other way for Eastern Michigan. And those are those situations where I wish Bozeman for Donk would just go up and score that or try to score it. He has to show that he is an offensive threat in the paint in order to make the passes that he's looking to pass, because he is a pass first, kind of a point center that wants to get his guys involved. He wants to facilitate because of his high IQ, how smart he is. But at the same time, you have to make sure that you're getting yourself implemented in that offense too. He's getting coached up right now by Lamont Paris. An eagle hit the deck, and we're gonna have a foul called on South Carolina. And that was Billingsley who hit the floor. The foul's gonna be called on Josh Gray. He gets. His first, he checked in for Bozeman's for Don. Come on, Paris. In his first season as the head coach for South Carolina. Spent his previous five seasons at Chattanooga. Took them to the NCAA tournament last season. Almost pulled off that first round upset over Illinois as the 13 seed. It's just a one point loss to the Illini. He was named SoCon Coach of the Year. Parlayed that success into this head coaching job here at South Carolina. And people don't understand how how difficult to, to win the SOCON is, and he's been able to do that and win a lot of games in that conference and beat some power fives out of that conference with UT Chattanooga. The guy knows how to win. Five seconds for Farrakhan. From three, short, Josh Gray with a strong rebound for South Carolina.
Carter on the drive, takes it to Farrakhan, and he draws the foul. Second foul on Farrakhan, and Chico Har Carter, excuse me, will head to the line. It's a tough non-conference schedule for Eastern Michigan, John. You know, when we talked to Coach Heath, he told us eh, maybe we went a little excessive with the schedule. If I had to do over, I'd schedule a couple of easier games to get some wins and maybe get some other guys in who haven't played much, I'd like a little bit of a redo. But at other stops like Arkansas or Kent State, he said the players' mentality was different. You know, this generation, you have to do a good job with the mental part of what these players can handle and, and pick up some wins and gain confidence. And the old days, we would take a loss, and we, we were so pissed off. This generation, he said, it takes a loss, and it affects them mentally. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree totally with uh, Coach Heath there as far as understanding the personnel that you're bringing in and obviously what you have coming up as far as your freshmen go, you have to make sure that you're bringing them along so that they are ready to fill the void as you have upperclassmen leaving with the transfer portal coming in. You're getting a lot of fifth-year seniors or grad seniors, and so they're only coming in for a year. If they're coming in for that one year, then – you have to make sure that you're grooming up your freshmen. And so from time to time, it can be hard if you schedule too high too early. And Coach Heath, obviously with what he has in his personnel, what he has uh, as far as in Imani Bates and Farrakhan and Acuff, those are guys that are looking to make it at the next level. But you also have to make sure that you're bringing up your, your younger guys up as well. Jalen Billingsley getting taped up. Billingsley out of Lutheran East High School. He was runner-up for Ohio Mr. Basketball after a senior season. Of course, the winner was Malachi Brown of St. Vincent St. Mary, who went on to star at Ohio State last season. was the number 20 pick in the NBA draft by the Spurs. Teammate of H.E. Johnson at Ohio State. Chico at the line. There's only a 54% free throw shooter coming into tonight. That's a surprising number for a 50% three-point shooter. Yeah, and that's because he doesn't get there much. But when he does get there, he's got to lock in because the guy really can shoot the ball. The lead is back to 10 for the Gamecocks. Farrakhan so quick, pulls up. No good. Jacoby Wright with the rebound. He'll push. Brown's been quiet. He drives and draws a whistle. It's going to be a foul called on Javante Randall. Randall picks up his first, and it'll bring us to immediate timeout with 15.46 left to go in the second half. South Carolina leads Eastern Michigan 48-38. His ability to score at a high clip and to understand that he, his consistency, especially once he sees it go in, is unparalleled. Transferred in from Memphis, where he spent his freshman season, back to his hometown of Ypsilanti to play for Eastern Michigan, where head coach Stan Heath played. And I asked Coach Heath about the Ypsilanti connection with Bates. He said, listen, I didn't really know about him, and he didn't know me. It just so happened the timing was incredible, me having a background with the NBA and then getting that job and Monty wanting to get there, get there, of course, the NBA, but being from Ypsilanti, my alma mater, him wanting to go back home, me wanting to go back. He said the stars just aligned. Yeah, honestly, that's a, that's a great situation. And then adding some of the pieces that have come with him, I mean, that makes this team a very deadly group. Bates over right. Rebound for Randall. Second opportunity for the Eagles. No good. Brown, the home run pass to Chico Carter. Feeds right. Runs into a roadblock in Javante Randall. But it will stay with the Gamecocks. And South Carolina is trying to see if they can get something easy by attacking Eastern Michigan before they get set defensively. Right to inbound. Finds Johnson. Michi kicks it out to Chico Carter. Lovejoy closed on him quickly. An open look in the corner for Brown. In and out. Josh Gray for the offensive board. Johnson for three. Too strong. Yeah, and those are those situations where Michi Johnson has not gotten much daylight today. 
and he's when he's get, got his feet set like that, that's a high percentage shot. And so if you're South Carolina, you want those opportunities consistently. Zach Davis checks in. He had a thunderous putback in the first half. Gave the Gamecocks a spark. Him and Hank and Sanford both provided great minutes off the bench as freshmen, and you can just tell, like, how they're growing and evolving within this offense and defense that Coach Lamont Paris is presenting for them. Earlier this season, Coach Paris said, I really like this group of freshmen. It's not just Gigi Jackson. Yeah, it's not. It's... Hank and Sanford, really good player. Got to watch him a lot when he was in high school in Charlotte. Strong. Just has to understand the speed of the game. Zach Davis still understanding the offense, when and where to take the right shots. And as time progresses, he's going to be a really good guard for the Gamecocks. He forced Acuff into a difficult shot. Jackson in the paint. Feeds Brown. Almost. And in one situation, instead, Hayden Brown will head to the line. Would have been a circus shot if he made it. Yeah, and, and Hayden Brown has been very, very active in the paint and making sure that he's available. Like Gigi Jackson was stuck in a situation there. Instead of standing still, and this is how you know that Hayden Brown is a veteran, he got to the open space where he was available for the pass from Gigi where he could then create and make something happen. All of Hayden's points tonight have come from the free throw line. You see it there. Gigi Jackson's in trouble. He gets himself available and gets to the open space. Misses both on this trip. Hayden now four for eight tonight. He's got four points. Jihad. Kobe Wright taking on the challenge of guarding Imani Bates. The turnaround, that's terrific defense from Jacoby Wright. Now it's right up ahead against Acuff. Johnson, an open look. No good. Fight for the rebound. It's tapped to Michi Johnson. Another opportunity. Another miss for Michi. Honestly, Michi Johnson doesn't miss that many in a row. So I can't, I can't tell you how many times I've seen that guy run off a handful of threes. Just being consistent. Right from the corner. Gamecocks going cold here. Last couple of minutes. They still lead 49 to 38 as Legend Jeter checks back in. And the reason why they still have the ball is because they create more opportunities when they are cold, which South Carolina has showed the ability to do. When they are cold, they find a way to create more opportunities so that they can get into a rhythm. The fall away from Jackson, no good. Davis for the offensive Sky. rebound. Michi Johnson, it's swatted away by Acuff. Brown backing down Jeter. Brown the turnaround. No good. The rebound for Amani Bates. Bates pulls up. A deep three. Got it. That's the thing. You cannot give Amani Bates that kind of space. The guy's a pro. I mean, he can make those shots in his sleep. Bates has 24. Six for 11 from downtown. Speaking of downtown, there's Gigi Jackson. And that's what we talked about. Gigi Jackson can score at all three levels. One of the things that he does is, though, he is a player of the system that's presented to him. And so whatever the defense is giving, he's responding to that defense. He saw that the defender went under. Two people went with the roll man or the slip man, and he made him pay. Gigi has 15. It's his first three. He's a 36% three-point shooter coming into tonight. Bates. Ah, the soft touch off the glass. Yeah. Monty Bates can put it in the basket however you want it. It's so long, John. How do you defend it? You defend length with length, to be honest with you. it's That's the main thing about him is if you don't have that type of size to combat him, if you don't play him with physicality and, and, and take away his space, he is going to make you pay. Bates fires away. No good. Jackson will bring it up for the Gamecocks. 
Johnson from the corner. In and out. Another offensive rebound for South Carolina. That pass is deflected. It's a turnover. This has been a frenetic pace, which actually favors Eastern Michigan. They love this style of play, and that's what we talked about. This is going to be a game of teams playing within themselves. This is right up Eastern Michigan's alley. Jeter. Now it's Brown against Bates. And I have a whistle and a foul called on Hayden Brown. So Hayden picks up his second. 10.58 left to go in the second half. South Carolina leads Eastern Michigan 52-43. He sees it go in, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It's just nothing you can do at that point. Similar to Gigi Jackson this season, he was the youngest player in college basketball last season at age 17 when he began his college career at Memphis. Only played 18 games last year, missed three with a finger injury, 15 later in the season with a lower back injury. Gets it inside to Billingsley in the paint, draws a whistle. Missed the entire American tournament. Lingsley will head to the line. Bates only averaged 9.7 per game last year. John, 3.3 rebounds, and his draft, excuse me, his draft stock fell a bit. Yeah, I mean, it's you only got to play 12 games. And so when you have those types of situations where you're not playing as many games, it's not meant as much time for you to get the exposure. And so, and then it's obviously tough for a lot of young players to make that transition into the college level and adjusting to the speed, which we knew Imani Bates would at some point. And the same with Gigi Jackson adjusting to the speed of play. It takes time. And so there's a maturity factor that comes in with it as well and processing and understanding how to adapt to that level and then from that level go to the next level. And that's what they're all aspiring to do there. And so... You have to process quickly, especially at the next level, because the game speeds up even faster. That was a great opportunity for Eastern Michigan. Billingsley missed three. Jackson does not miss from the corner. Gigi Jackson in an open floor situation where Eastern Michigan was trying to get a trap action at the top half of the floor. Was able to just see and find Gigi Jackson in the corner where he made him pay. Gigi has 18. Gamecock lead is 12. And a breakaway for Jacoby Wright. Now against Bates. Jacoby Wright. The Gamecocks doing what they do. Getting out in the open floor. They're just taking advantage, like we talked about before. Opportunistic on the break, but not afraid to get back in their half court. There's the dangerous Farrakhan. Eagles would love to get him going. Yeah, Noah Farrakhan is very deadly, especially from the mid-range. And once he gets in that area... And sees it go down a couple of times. And this is what this team is. A Cup, Amani Bates, Farrakhan, rhythm players. Once they see it go in and once they find the rhythm, they're very tough to guard. Farrakhan has six halfway to his season average. Strong rebound from Legend Jeter. This is Noah Farrakhan. Gets past Davis. The shot was altered by Jackson. Bates a deep three. Oh, he's done it again. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's a layup for him. He's felt the ball go in. It's over. You can't let him touch the ball at this point. Once it does, it's and he lets it go, it's a high percentage shot. Bates has 29. Hank and Sanford backing down Billingsley, blocked from behind, but he stays with it. And that's what you're saying now. The hole in that zone defense that Eastern Michigan is playing is in the paint area. So you got a guy like Hank and Sanford who is very aggressive and wants to establish himself in there. Oh, it's smacked away by Davis. Here's Jackson. Unable to connect with Jacoby Wright. And it's turnover for the Gamecocks. And Jackson did not have control of his handle there. Understood and knew exactly where Jacoby Wright was or had an idea, but was able, wasn't able to corral the ball so that he could make a good pass to him. Davis checks out. Some highlight plays tonight from Zach Davis. Thunderous put back dunk in the first half. Outstanding rejection just a moment ago. 
Farrakhan on the drive. Now Johnson will look to push. Jacoby Wright passing the three. They get it inside to Hankin Sanford with the stuff. It's a great minute for Hankin Sanford, really establishing himself, just running the floor like a gazelle, but also being strong, being physical, and wanting the contact. Bench choice. Ooh, my lucky number. Plus, earn five times miles on flights mm -hmm. and ten times miles oh. on hotels through Capital One Travel. What's in your wallet? Well, the explanation was incidental contact, so no foul. As we resume play, Gamecocks leading 61 to 48. Bates pulls up and hits. That's eight threes. Yeah, eight That's for 14 from three for Amani Bates. He has 32 points, and that's a career high. His previous career high was 30 against Michigan. Jackson will respond. I feel like I feel like I feel like this is a great matchup between these two. You're seeing the future. Jackson has 21. Acuff hits a tough shot, and Acuff has to do more of that. Sometimes he falls silent because of the talent that he's playing with. Just four points for Acuff. He's two for 10. Bates has it stripped. Carter an open look for three. No good, Jackson fighting hard for the offensive rebound. He'll draw the foul. It's this terrific matchup with Imani Bates continues. Yeah, that was started by Chico Carter trailing Amani Bates who had a fast break situation and picking his pocket from behind. It's Lovejoy who picks up the foul. Gamecock lead is 11. Johnson will drive. And he'll draw a whistle. Looks like it's going to be on Lovejoy once again. Michi Johnson working to implement himself in the offense. He's had a handful of open looks that he hasn't been able to knock down. And so how you get yourself going in a rhythm is attack the basket. Get downhill a couple of times. Get you some paint touches and see if you can create in that regard. Michi had a rough two weeks in and out of games when he was hurt. He said he was just trying to get his rhythm back. He mentioned in a post-game press conference recently, coming into the season feeling really explosive and good, and then that setback, he said it does something to you mentally. But then he had that big Georgetown game, which did a lot for his confidence, and that's what you saw in that shot in the biggest of moments against the Hoyas. And he's been great since. Looks like Billingsley took a shot to the face, and now he's down. Yes, it has been a very physical game. Michigan roster, there needs to be more offensive circulation and more help for Amani Base. Now on the defensive end, South Carolina has been able to have their way in creating second chances, and that's why the score is what it is. It's not just a shooting match. It is them running their stuff, being efficient, and getting themselves multiple opportunities to score the ball. Bates, the step back three over Bozeman's for Donk. Not close. Offensive board for Jeter. Whose ball is it? It's Eastern Michigan's. You want to know who's in the bottom of that rat pack? That was Lovejoy. Lovejoy. That's what he brings to the table. He created a second chance, and he's one of the smallest guys on the floor. Jeter in the paint. Slice it through, through two Gamecocks and draws a whistle. Gigi Jackson raises his hand and says, it's on me. It is on Jackson. So he picks up, I believe, his first as we take another look. Gigi Jackson kind of went down with his block. It's definitely a foul there. One of the best names in college basketball, Legend Jeter. Got a last a name, name. It's, it's not spelled the same way, but if it's pronounced Jeter, got to be named Legend. The guy's, the guy's first name is Legend. He had no choice. Crowd hoping for a miss. Chick-fil-A on the line, and Jeter spoils it. Now the booze will rain down on Legend Jeter. It's okay. That's why he's Legend. He said, it's not going to be me. 
Year two for Stan Heath and company. Off to a slow start, beginning of the season. After winning the season opener, dropped six in a row, and nine out of ten, but they're coming off that big win against rival Detroit. They close out the non-conference portion of their season with an upset win here in Columbia. They trail by 11. Gamecocks with the basketball, swing it around, Jacoby Wright. Carter gets it inside, Bozeman's for dunk. He's surrounded, so he kicks it out to Johnson. Instead, it's Jackson from the wing. No good. And this is that danger zone for South Carolina where they have to make sure that they are still getting stops because one thing Eastern Michigan can do is they can run off a ton of shots really quickly. We saw Amani Bates alone run off nine points in about 25 seconds. Jacoby Wright called for the foul. That's his second. Acuff loses possession. It's Michi Johnson up ahead. He feeds Carter. Easy off the glass. And this is where South Carolina has made their bread and butter, capitalizing on offensive mistakes from Eastern Michigan and turning them into easy fast break points. Transition basket. The lead is 13. Lovejoy trying to find a window. Offensive rebound for Randall. Right finds Bozeman's for dunk. We're going to have a whistle and a foul that's going to go against the Eagles. I'm going to need Bozeman for dunk to just try to lay it up once or twice. Like, it's hurting my spirit, man. Like, at this point, you got to think about the next scouting report and the next scouting report. What SEC teams are going to do if they know that you're not going to be an offensive threat in that paint, they're going to play you straight up and deny the the three-point outlets so that you have to do it. And so Bozeman Verdunk, who is such a special passer, has to create more passing angles and passing abilities for himself only by showing that he's willing. I'm not saying putting the ball in the basket. Show that he's willing to take the shot so that he is a paint presence threat. It's in and out on the free throw attempt. He's yet to score tonight. Jihad no good. Hayden Brown with the rebound. Michi Johnson wide open from deep. He's short. Jackson fighting for the rebound. Inside. Bozeman's for dunk. Surrounded by Eagles. And Michi Johnson will call timeout. So South Carolina will look to set up a play here with after his freshman season of high school, he was offered by Michigan State, Michigan, and Duke. He's touted by so many as the top high school prospect in the country, regardless of class. Jackson, an open look. He was also the top fourth grader. They talked about him in the fourth grade. That was madness. Are they rate guys in the fourth grade? Not, no, they don't. They did Imani Bates, though. So let that marinate. Tells you just how good this kid is. Acuff. Gets it to Bates. Double team quickly. Now it's just Bozeman's for Donk on him. Tough shot. Unbelievable. Amani Bates. And there's nothing you can do. I told you, once this guy sees it go in, like he is a pro. Career high 34. That was the 6'9 Bozeman's for Donk with a hand in his face. Yes, and, and it doesn't matter. I mean, because... Amani Bates is 6'10". A whistle and a foul that's going to go against Eastern Michigan. It's going to send Hayden Brown back to the line. That's where he's done all of his damage tonight. But first, we're going to have a timeout. 310 left to go. South Carolina leads Eastern Michigan 67 56. To go, he said, We went out recruiting to look at this kid, and it's like, Hey, I like this kid, but I want to offer him. You almost have to wait to see who's coming out in the portal, though. Because yeah, you have everyone coming back next year, so it's, it's more about looking for specific needs. 
in the landscape is a lot different when you can go out in that portal and find experience without them having to sit out a year. I mean, the portal's a new JUCO. It's the new area where you can get somebody that knows how to win, know, has the experience. You don't have to do as much development as you used to regarding building up a freshman for three years and then having them ready. you got somebody that's game ready right away. And so with that being said, you still get, you still want those freshmen. You, they got to start somewhere, but it is limited spots, limited availability compared to what it used to be because we said it's the new transfer or we, the transfer portal is a new JUCO. There's still JUCO out there too. So you just added another aspect of recruitment that a lot of freshmen are not get are not getting the <laughs> the advantage anymore. No well, experience is such a valuable thing. We've seen that this season. Hayden Brown coming over to South Carolina. Brown has six. Bates draws the foul. It's going to be called on Michi Johnson. Bates was looking for that NBA continuation. Ref said we ain't there yet. Bates looking to add to a career night. They find him inside against Bozeman's Verdunk. This kid's hunting for 40. That's how it feels. But at the same time, what you're seeing is a one-man wrecking ball versus a team. That's why you have to score it. It's what it is right now. And so, like we talked about before, South or Eastern Michigan is going to have to find a way to get themselves more offensive flow. One second. But first travel is going to be called on Bozeman's for Zonk. Would have been a shot clock violation anyway. It We're going to get a shot he was off. looking to pass it. So the Gamecock lead is 11, 220 left to go. And that's, and honestly, that's still danger zone. That is danger zone for South Carolina because of how deadly Eastern Michigan is at putting the ball in the basket in quick moments and spurts. Randall, offensive foul. Hayden Brown draws another one. A wily veteran, Hayden Brown, man, just doing what he does I mean you got to have those guys because what he just created was a turnover what he created was a possession for his team and that's why his experience is so valuable John. it really is you got to have somebody like Hayden Brown if you are going to go into the portal next year you want to get another one of those Jackson for three connects Big three for T.G. Jackson, just recognizing that's what that is. That was a read. That was a ball screen read and understanding the defender went under, gave him the daylight he needed for him to get into his rhythm and knock down the three. Jackson has 24. Jihad for three. Rattles it in. Jihad could be a special player for Eastern Michigan. He just brings so much versatility as far as being able to post up but also show his ability to shoot the ball. Coming off that 17-point performance against Detroit. He's been seeing more minutes of late for the Eagles. Acuff. Here comes Eastern Michigan. South Carolina calls timeout. Danger zone. That's what we talked about. Danger zone. Eastern Michigan is such a go for a lot of these NBA scouts here. He's got to show that he can win, too. And so... Winning time is everything, like you just said. And so in this particular situation, yes, you show that you've got it. Like individually, you are a a problem. There's not many guys that I've seen that can do that at the collegiate level and against quality competition. And so if you are Imani Bates, you got to figure out a way to start putting those, those games together for wins so that you can, when you get to the NCAA tournament, get more exposure. Well, that's a dagger from Hayden Brown. The lead is back to 10. Yeah, those are those situations where when you got a Wiley veteran like Hayden Brown, you always feel comfortable in closing. Shot from Acuff is no good. And it looks like the Gamecocks are going to hold on. We have a stoppage here. 
as Bates looks a bit shaken up behind the play. And now Kevin David Rice, who's the nephew of former Michigan and NBA star Glenn Rice, checks in for Amani Bates, who gets a nice hand here inside Colonial Life Arena in front of the visiting fans. He put on a show. Yeah, when you put on a show like that, it's just like when you saw Luka Doncic score 60 against New York. You had to give him the respect because he put on a great show and made it worthwhile to stay in the seats all the way to the end. Michi Johnson will dribble out the clock. And the Gamecocks are going to pick up their seventh win of the season as they defeat Eastern Michigan 74.